Hello, I'm Santiago Iniguez, president of IE University, and I would like to welcome you to the Headspring Exchange Virtual Summit of 2020. This summit is intended to share with you the latest trends in executive education and management training. Headspring, which is a company founded by the Financial Times and IE Business School, is a young institution that brings to your corporations the latest knowledge in order to develop your managers. We have a number of advantages. First, the combination of the academic rigor of IE University and IE Business School with the thoughtful leaders that come from the Financial Times. We combine the knowledge that brings a media, a leading media internationally and a leading university. Second, we are champions in training executives online and on blended programs, hybrid formats. IE University has developed over the past 20 years a very distinctive methodology that brings the best methodologies across all sorts of channels and platforms. Our university is actually ranked as one of the leading universities worldwide in delivering these sorts of hybrid formats. Third, we very much emphasize design and adaptation of our programs to the needs of corporations. And in addition, we also insist very much on the assessment of the efficacy and the impact of our programs. I guess that uh, our value proposal to companies is very distinctive as compared to many other uh, programs at other business schools. Traditionally, business schools have been just uh, cutting and pasting their existing open programs to their custom education deliveries. However, Headspring works very closely with the companies in order to develop applied solutions. We dedicate lots of time in order to assess your needs and develop those programs that suit your needs much better. Allow me to make a reference to the current circumstances which are really exceptional. Over the past year, we have lived in radical uncertainty in times of extreme volatility, and this will probably continue over the coming months. In fact, this experience has been an excellent opportunity to realize that technology is not a foe, is actually a friend. I'm sure that we have all used lots of platforms and technologies available and apps in order to connect with our colleagues at work, in order to reach out to family members and to friends. And uh, here at IE University and uh, at Headspring, we have actually developed new ways of conveying education using the best possible platforms. Our solutions don't just consist of uh, delivering conferences via Zoom or via Adobe or Teams. We actually bring the ultimate methodologies that make this whole experience become a very rich learning process for the companies. In fact, over the past year, we have been delivering programs for many different corporations and uh, we have achieved an experience which is very distinctive and high quality in how to train executives using this very unique methodology, hybrid formats, liquid learning. What I hope is that uh, you have the chance today to learn about uh, the ultimate trends in executive training and management development. And of course, feel free to reach out to us. We look forward to building long-lasting relations with our corporate partners. And now let me introduce the next uh, speaker, who is actually uh, my co-host today in this introductory session. He's uh, John Reading. John Reading is the CEO of the Financial Times Group and the architect of its uh, digital revolution over the past years. John has a background in journalism and has become one of the leading figures in, in the media industry over the past years. He and I have been working together in designing the strategy for uh, Headspring over the past years, along of course with uh, the board of directors of the company and the rest uh, of the fellow members that uh, may be present here today, including our CEO Gustav Nordbach. What I hope again is that you enjoy the session and without further ado, let me hand over to John Reading. 
Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Santiago, and good day to all of you from wherever you may be tuning in. It's a pleasure to be here at the Headspring Learning Exchange. And my role and my goal today is to give some thoughts and context about how businesses are having to adapt to the multiple connected crises and challenges they currently face. From my own perspective, I've been CEO for the FT for the past 13 years, and I've seen multiple crises from the global financial crisis to the fallout of 9-11. But I've never seen a period like this with unprecedented challenges in their nature and severity. Of course, stock markets have soared and sentiment is inspired by the recent positive news on the COVID vaccine. This news is clearly encouraging, not least because it demonstrates the strength of science, its ability to rise to such an extreme and complex set of challenges. But we also need some perspective. There are still important steps to go in verifying and deploying a successful vaccine. And we need to remember that COVID didn't create many of the crises and challenges we face. It exacerbated and amplified pre-existing challenges and crises that society and business have struggled to address. Some of its effects will be permanent. Above all, and whatever the speed and impact of the vaccines, the COVID pandemic has served as a very powerful reminder of a crucial constant, the need to adapt to increasingly complex challenges and how best to do that. I'll try and give some perspectives on that from my experiences at the FT uh, and from the insight that gives into global business more generally. Businesses have no choice but to embrace disruption and upheaval. Hope, denial, subsidy is not a winning strategy. But if they embrace change right, they will come out stronger. This is our approach at the FT, and it's also a theme that echoes through the deep channels the FT has into global business, through our reporting, of course, but also through our strategic partnerships. Headspring is a good example of those partnerships, and I'll say more on that later. If businesses have no option but to adapt, they do, of course, have choices and decisions about how they position themselves in the emerging corporate and social landscape. But I'd argue, and the FT believes and articulates through our new agenda mission, that the sole shareholder focus of previous decades, already giving way in recent years to a broader responsibility to a broader set of stakeholders, has become distinctly pre-pandemic. The role and responsibility of business in building back better from the environment to diversity and employment has been further highlighted by our current crises. These are big and deep themes at the heart of the FT's mission to help business align more effectively with the priorities of society. And I won't do them justice in my opening remarks, but I'll make a few comments which will hopefully help inform some of the discussions we'll be having through the day, which I look forward to. First, digital transition and digital transformation are now on steroids. Retail, education, media, even property transactions based by definition on bricks and mortar have necessarily shifted rapidly and radically online. As and when the pandemic recedes, there may be some reversion in some of these areas, but I'd argue that the status quo ante will feel and be antiquated. Forums such as, such as this are a good example. The ability to convene effectively and efficiently leaders in their field through virtual channels has been proven. At the FT, we did 190 or so forums and events in 2019. They were physical. This year, we will do 270, 95% of which will be online. Next year, they will all be virtual. Necessity may have been the mother of this innovation, but we will hold on to and capitalize on the advantages, connecting people across borders, avoiding the costs of travel and hotel conference suites. Disruption is not new to news media, and the FT has been at the vanguard of change, moving early to transform our business model from advertising to stronger, more sustainable reader revenues in response to the rise of big tech and their marketing power. That shift has been vindicated and validated. We are emerging through this crisis with record levels of readership, 
and subscribers, the highest in our 133-year history. We are proving that quality news can be a quality growth business in the toughest of times. That mindset, I would argue, has general relevance well beyond the FT and news media. The post-COVID survival and success mindset must be to seize the opportunities in the challenge of digital transformation. In particular, the connection with consumers. With digital comes data, with data comes insight into consumer insight, and with that comes more relevant and engaging products and services. Just as important as how businesses adapt to connect with consumers is how they connect with themselves. The rapid forced experiment of working from home or working remotely has been one of the success stories of the pandemic. At the FT, we went from 2000 plus people working together in our global offices to zero in a week. And we didn't skip a beat. We weren't alone. The theory of remote working has been proved in practice. That brings advantages and opportunities for work-life balance, less commuting, more family time. But it also brings huge challenges, isolation, stress, the lack of personal connections at a time when the aforementioned digital challenge requires ever closer collaboration between teams. A big question among many, how do you sustain a corporate culture when the corporate institution is atomized? How do you share and embed the values of your business and its brand into new employees if they work remotely? A challenge of particular importance, given the emphasis on mission and values by the new generations of recruits. Many of these questions are still work in progress. There is no playbook for the unprecedented series of crises and dislocations we're facing. And because there's no playbook, it is especially important for leadership teams to listen, to consult with peers and colleagues, and to share ideas, experiences, and expertise. This forum, as the name Learning Exchange suggests, is part of that process of sharing, of exchanging insights and experiences. So too, more broadly, is the mission and opportunity of Headspring. That mission to combine the academic and pedagogical excellence of IE University, especially in digital delivery, with the real life insight and experience of the FT team to address business and leadership challenges has always been powerful. It has always also been unique. There are many leadership courses, many business training programs, but none with those finger on the pulse perspectives and insights provided by a global business news organization. At times like this, these attributes have never been so important or so relevant. The speed and scale of change we have experienced in business and society is still hard to come to terms with, but we must. This is a once in a generation opportunity to remake and rethink. And we hope to help our partners in managing the necessary transformation and enabling them to see and to seize those opportunities and to come through strong. Thank you. Um, I hope like me, you're looking forward to um, some fruitful sessions of discussion and debate. Thank you very much.